Lesson 12.1, prisms. So we move on to volume. How do we start 1D? Way back at chapter 1. How do we start 2D? Which was last chapter, it was area. Well, hopefully you remember with postulates. And definitions. As in, we've always been working in a straight line or in a single plane. And now, with volume, we're going to be working in three dimensions. So, being a bit of a smart ass here, um, a prism, it's a 3D shape that some people can't draw well and other people can't draw it at all. Uh, I'll draw a hexagonal one, which is relatively challenging. You draw the hexagon on top, and you kind of flatten it out because you got to draw all this stuff in too. And the key is really the vertical lines. Uh, you, you could easily argue this is a course on um, shape drawing. Easily argue that. I mean, it's it's not easy. So there's my hexagonal prism. Now I've got to define all the pieces. This side is what we call lateral face. This whole bottom what we call a base. The top is also a base. So there's two bases. Doesn't have to be on the bottom, doesn't have to be on the top. They're just called bases. And finally, we have what we call this piece right here in red, a lateral edge. And we also have any of these pieces. Call it a base edge. So, those are just definitions. That's how you draw it. Far and away hardest part of this lesson is the drawing. So get good at it. Uh, uh, prism altitude is pretty much what you think it is. It's the perpendicular distance. We call it the height. Uh, we could have different types of prisms, both in terms of what the base looks like. So I'll do a triangular one here. And I've said it twice now, but I'll say it again just because I can't say it enough. If you're struggling drawing these, I understand. They're not easy. But a right prism does not mean right triangle here. It could, but it doesn't necessarily. It means right angles down here. The ground to lateral edge is at 90 degrees. So that's what makes it a right prism. An oblique prism, trying to more or less use the same shape here, comes down at an angle. So Whereas in this one, we have the height perpendicular over here. We'd have to extend the base and say that's the height. This is just simple definition, but we will rarely 
work with a oblique prism. As a matter of fact, we won't even say it's a right prism most of the time. We'll just say a prism, and we'll assume it's a right prism. A can, a bottle, a box, these are all right prisms or right cylinders. Always the sides should be perpendicular to the ground. That's how they, they work. So, now we get into some math. What's the lateral area? What's the area of one of the faces on the sides? I'm going to draw this up here just so we have it handy. I'm not going to draw the background for a change, the hidden line that's dotted. Assuming you knew that, that that's what the dotted line was, hidden. But let's give it some numbers. And for the fun of it, let's say it's a right angle. I'm not going to draw these in. Assume it's a right angle. So the top I have to draw in. We'll leave it like that. So lateral area is the area of all the sides. This side, this side, and the side in the back. Don't forget it. The base area is just the area of one of the bases. So in this case, the one we can see is up here. And the total area is... Basically, a total surface area. We just go with total area. That's what total area means. Let's do some math. What's the lateral area of this thing? Well, just like the previous unit, we can do each piece at a time. Let's do, uh, let's get all the colors off of here. Lateral area, got side one, side two, the back will be side three. So we have uh, six times 20 plus eight times 20 plus something else times 20. Gee, I, I don't know what that length is. I'll just take a random guess and call it 10. If you don't know why, I can't help you. 120 plus 160 plus 200. 480 units squared. But this says, shockingly, you can just add up the perimeter and multiply by height. So is that okay? 6 plus 8 plus 10 times 20 equals 24 times 20, 480 units squared. As in times past, I leave it up to you. Do the problem either way. For me, the first way makes sense. The second way is definitely faster. But it's up to you entirely. By the way, what's the base area? Don't forget your one half. go. And volume. The base area times the height. So you could do it for the previous problem. I'll take some time. The only right prism I haven't drawn so far is a box. Um, just give it random numbers, 8, 6, 12. You can assume these are all right angles, including the top. So the base area is 6 times 12 is 72 units squared. And the volume is just 72 times 8. And now, of course, it's units to the third. So you get a little bit of practice in math, but more than anything else, you get practice in drawing. It's an underappreciated skill. I strongly recommend getting good at it. Drawing a good picture is 95% of the battle. That's it. Good luck.